Hi there, this video is about the introduction to mathematical economics. Since mathematics is uh, felt as a difficult subject for many students, this video is not purely focused on mathematical economics only. It basically sheds some light on mathematics as a language and it also encourages us and motivates us to study this for our benefit and ease in understanding various disciplines including economics. So let's get started with the motivation because uh, mathematics is basically the oldest friend of ours because since the beginning of life on earth we had one human being who was Adam and that was the first number and then we had Eve and then there was addition that is one plus one and then their children that gave rise to the process of multiplication so you see mathematics is all around us and since the beginning of mankind and definitely all the prophets they were also of a certain number and that is also representing some uh, number that is a representative of some quantity and hence we are talking mathematics even in the beginning and primitive times then uh, we should focus on this word this is mathematics so it's taken from a latin word which is mathematica and it basically stands for mathematics or in other uh, jargon it is known as mathematicus so it is all um, a combination of various words or jargons that are used to represent mathematics basically it is showing us the origin of mathematics now let us uh, listen to some people who have expressed their uh, thinking regarding the mathematics according to Banach, it is basically as old as man himself uh, we have just seen that mathematics is as old as the human being himself it is a very universal thing because we uh, see that in films people are um, delivered various messages and everyone is able to understand because it is a kind of uh, artificial depiction of what can happen in the real life and mathematics and music are the two other tools through which we can communicate some message so here is Frank Capra's words about the mathematics and its universality pure mathematics in its way the poetry of logical ideas Albert Einstein to his opinion it was about the poetry of logical ideas that we do in mathematics another famous quote regarding mathematics is that God used beautiful mathematics in creating the world and yes we can agree with this because we have one sun we have one moon and we have solar system a certain number of planets certain number of bones in our body so you see there is quite a bit of mathematics and it's very beautiful to observe in our real life uh, another famous quote is about the uh, universality again that there's nothing you can do everything around you is mathematics everything around you is numbers so yes we can observe that we are surrounded by numbers now Prussian is something that we can get from mathematics uh, because in uh, one of the famous uh, economist he he believes that mathematics is equally good when it comes to literary words because the usual way of studying economics is in which we have text in which we have words and sometimes we use diagrams but mathematics is equally effective or even more effective as per Paul A. Simulson we will see this in the uh, process of this course as we go ahead and another quotation is about the clarity in mathematics that it doesn't have any hypocrisy it is just a uh, proverbial uh, term that we have used here basically what we want to understand here is that there is no vagueness there is clarity in the mathematics and those who can understand mathematics can really enjoy mathematics it is a precise and concise way of understanding and expressing various ideas another quotation about that 
then we have applicability of mathematics uh, it is definitely a very much applicable subject in social sciences and in pure sciences we see that mathematics can be used in approximately um, uh, all of the sciences true mathematician however is not a juggler of numbers but of concepts this is a very important thing to understand that we as students of uh, mathematical economics should not be stuck with the numbers we at the end should come to some sort of interpretation so that our purpose of understanding an economic situation gets fulfilled to solve a mathematical problem and to solve a mathematical economic problem is something different and in this course we will try to differentiate between the two and we will try to be analyst of the concepts via the language of mathematics not just jugglers of numbers so mathematics uh, is a, is a subject but uh, we we can try to understand it by not considering it as a subject this is another good way of understanding mathematical economics and mathematics usually people are afraid of it the students as we have already understood uh, Devi was one of the uh, individuals who had uh, astounding ability to do computations. So she was known as the human computer. And uh, she, thought, she said that uh, the children, they dread mathematics because they have a wrong approach. They take it as a subject. They shouldn't take it as a subject. They should take it as something which is a part of our daily life. They should take it as a language. Once they do, once we learn a language it doesn't remain difficult so it's a very good hack that she has told us actually it's a universal truth that we can use this um, um, subject as a language instead just of a, um, a subject with a lot of terminologies in it it is good and easy for young people because young people like to do adventures and mathematical processes they are usually adventurous and because uh, in the beginning we are uncertain if we are if we will be able to solve the situation or not but at the end once the solution is obtained it feels like as if we have gone through an adventure uh, another famous economist galileo he um, was known as a mathematical platoonist and he said that if he had to start his studies from the beginning he would go back and he would start with mathematics so, so this is how he valued mathematics as a beginning uh, as a primary tool of learning and uh, uh, Albert Einstein he's there to motivate us because he says that uh, the difficulties in mathematics that people worry about they shouldn't because his worries are still greater because he was his work was very um, large and impactful so this is why uh, we should not be worried about what we are facing in mathematics we should be motivated now uh, mathematics and non-mathematical economics uh, we, we need to understand this thing because um, basically it's about the difference between about mathematics and uh, mathematical economics and mathematics for economists uh, there's a thin line between the two um, and usually this difference is not felt but we will try to shed some light on it as you can see that uh, mathematics for economics economics is uh, a set of mathematical tools mainly but when it comes to mathematical economics it is basically economics but in a mathematical flavor so this is the main difference this is more of economics and this is more of mathematical tools but usually these things are overlapped but we are just trying to refine the things a little bit the tools that we can study and we will study in this course is uh, is a a couple and even more of some tools that is algebra matrices differential calculus these are the tools that we will study and apply on economic situations and then um, we can apply it on various economic situations for instance we can apply it on market equilibrium something that we have been studying in theory and also with the help of diagrams we can also apply matrices for example on national income analysis we can also apply 
uh, marginal ut uh, differentiation that is the differential calculus on marginal utility and cost and product analysis so these are various examples of economic applications that we will do in this uh, course just to refer a few and then we have mathematical economics as an approach not as a branch so this is a policy that people usually uh, fall into and we should not do this mistake uh, this is an approach a language uh, of studying economics uh, as we study economics with the help of diagrams or text this is another approach why it is an approach because in this approach we will study microeconomic problems macroeconomic problems problems from my, uh, public finance international trade and other branches of economics so all those branches of economics they will be studied but in a mathematical fashion there can be a few examples that we can remind ourselves with usually we study about demand and supply curves and their equilibrium so this is how mathematically it can be expressed when we talk about the calculation of the taxation revenue yes we can do this mathematically and if you want to calculate the local price elasticity of foreign demand of exports we can also do this with the help of some uh, calculus and some algebra so symbolically we can express it like this so you see that we are trying to make things very brief this is a very lengthy title however this symbol of it this notation is very brief so in this way the mathematical economics can be studied and in the background we have mathematics which is nothing new we have been understanding this in our um, past as well as we can see this in our surroundings so we should be motivated and we must not be afraid of mathematics